Hello. Happy to be here. I'm Alex. This is my lovely assistant, David, one of my lead design engineers. Um, I'm from Neil Fay. I'm the third generation in running Neil Fay Company. Uh, I was raised in the factory. Um, and my mom was an art major. So I'm what happens if you grow up in a factory and your mom was an art major. Uh, the only thing I ever considered doing other than running the company uh, was actually being an artist. And I've found a way to actually combine those two very, very different sensibilities into a really interesting team. Um, we're currently about 65. And uh, uh, 65 very talented people working in Santa Barbara, California, uh, which is a key part of what we do and, and part of what makes us who we are. I chose this image kind of at the last minute because I thought it would be a little bit of a palate cleanser from talking about design thinking. Uh, we're a very sm much different animal. Uh, but design and business is where we live. There, everything we do in business involves design. And without design, there is no business. Um, this is an image of my sailboat uh, moored off of Santa Rosa Island where we went on a surf trip. It's a short 25-mile sail from Santa Barbara from our slip. And the reason this relates to design is the crew on that sailboat for that trip was a bunch of design engineers of mine. We're there surfing. We're being inspired. Uh, a lot of what we do goes back to the ocean. We're always looking at surfing and sailing. And, um, and it just was a good memory. <laughs> when I got invited to this, my good friend Tony said, why don't you do some kind of a demonstration? And the first thing that sort of popped into my head was, why don't I put something together? And that's what David is working on right now. The image that you're looking at is from 2015, when I was invited to be part of the, uh, an exhibition called 10 Designers in the West Wing of the Somerset House during the London Design Festival. And this is an idealized, anodized, machined aluminum wave. And if you, if you stand on that thing as if you're surfing and you are surfing, you actually feel the adrenaline. Actually, it really feels like what it's like to be in that position. Um, I took it to London thinking that we were going to sort of talk to designers and architects about West Coast design. Ended up making a lot of children really happy. <laughs> Apparently, if you run up this and then lose traction and slide down it on your belly, that's just a hoot. And you just want to do it over and over and over. Um, I thought, Maybe I'll take some of that experience and bring it to, bring it to Singapore. Um, we do every, everything we do is in modules and, how, and experimenting with how modules go together. We work all the way from earphones. Uh, I'll have one machine making a run of 2,000 precision machined earphones next to a machine making a 2,000 square foot facade. We have laser focus on one material all over the map of where it goes. So this was, a, this was a particularly fun one. And I thought it would be interesting to reprise this. So I thought, let's do a different form that also relates to what we love. And uh, I got an idea to do a, a, make a spinnaker. That's a beautiful form. It has, some, it has some things that are interesting to it architecturally. And I had imagined how this, this particular model could actually be, be a very small part of a much larger piece later, all the way up to museum scale. Um, so on, the very, on day one of the project, I, I was out of town on business. I called my head programmer and I said, I think we could build something about 10 feet tall out of 50 modules. And I bet David could put it together while I'm talking. Um, so take our spinnaker, panelize it into 50 chunks, and see what that looks like. Uh, instead of making a 10-foot version of it, he made one this tall. Broke it into, he, he showed me two versions. When I arrived home that night, I landed, went to the shop, and grabbed this already anodized piece and took it home to show my wife, because she's the boss. And she's the best one at telling me when I'm off, off track. I noticed something about it, which is I had it in my pocket. I was holding it. And this was a model of a 10-foot thing. This in itself was a very, very interesting object that has some legs that's going to apply to something down the road. So everything we do leads to something else. Um, I took it down to the beach to see, down to the slip to kind of see what it looked like and how it related in that space, because I was, happened to be there anyway. The next, spot, the next thing we did was, well, let's look and see. Let's stand in front of it and see what a 10-foot spinnaker looks like. A 10-foot spinnaker is really big. So we scaled it back. We also learned it wasn't going to fit in the room. Um, 
we moved from the very small, smooth piece. I wanted to add texture to this because we do a lot of work with texture. We made this, this actual piece that's been photoshopped in is about this big. That happened on day three. And I looked at it and I said, mm, that's, too much, that's too much depth to the texture and not enough draft. I wanted something with a little, with, with more, um, more dimension, more depth, more like an actual sail itself. So we, uh, Ted, who's the best sailor on the crew, remodeled the spinnaker to make it, to give it more depth and give it more drama and actually make it a lot more realistically like a sail. We took that piece that was about this big down to the beach and shot it. Uh, we do a lot of photography at sunset or sunrise at the beach because that's a nice time to be at the beach. And the light's really great. Santa Barbara faces due south. So you've got the sun going like this and you've got two really great opportunities right down the street from the shop to get some beautiful photography. Um, I said, all right, I like the depth. While this was happening in parallel, David and Ted were working on individual triangular modules and how they tie to each other. Uh, in London, the, the wave was put together with stainless steel brackets, and they created all the form. This, all the form is created from the, the lofting of the perimeter of these modules using a fifth axis mill. Um, if you're a machinist, that's super interesting. I was really interested in taking this and uh, building a small piece of architecture to test it out because it's getting ready for the next project that we're going to do and how that's going to lead to something else. Um, we finalized the form and um, determined the number of modules and started working. And we will stop using that thing now. <laughs> um, David is, uh, David's finishing some, some things up, and I thought, when, after, when Tony invited me and said, why don't you do a demonstration, um, I thought the best way of explaining who we are is just explain how we did a project. So this, this is part of how we did the project. The one, one thing I didn't mention is after the panelization, we made a four inch version and we machined in the final texture took it to the beach and photoshopped it. So we realized by making something this big, we knew exactly what was going to happen when we made the eight foot thing. Um, we started to make the final parts about a week ago, a week and a half ago. And the actual fabrication took less than 48 hours because we worked totally vertically in-house from raw material to the, the fully assembled unit. Uh, one machine was making the light weighting. Another machine was creating the perimeter. A third machine was creating the texture. They were given a, a quick deburr, a light polish, anodized red, and then we masked it because I really thought it'd be interesting to sort of play up the super graphic at the rear of this thing. A lot of people that saw the wave said, I like the backside better. So we made the backside have a very different character than the, um, than the front side. And then as it was coming out of the anodized tanks, we were actually assembling it. So it was growing as it, as it uh, was finished. We'll go ahead and show you what it looks like. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, so if we've got this oriented well, this is showing the light. You can see this is not a heavy piece of architecture. And um, these, these are creating light weighting. Makes it easier to ship, easier to, easier to hold, and it's quite stiff. And um, these little biscuits here are something we call chiclets that David engineered. We, we, uh, we tried two completely competing areas because we didn't really know how we were going to get these modules to attach to each other. Um, this one won because of speed. The other one's a little stronger. The next step we go when we get into real architecture, we'll probably use a combination of both. We have four minutes. Shall we show them the other side? <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, we can turn that slide on now. Yeah. So there, that's the spinnaker to Free Enterprise, our racing sailboat that we race every Wednesday night. And that's why this is a red spinnaker. We also know that culturally, Singapore uses a lot of red. So we thought it just made a lot of sense to bring a, bring a big red aluminum kite. <laughs> uh, at the end of this project, everything we do, uh, like Sir Johnny said recently, uh, it's not just about the product, it's about what you developed while you're developing the product that leads to the next one. This little project here has lots of lots of legs to it. 
We learned about things that, at, that we're going to use at a jewelry scale. We learned about a new technique for using photography and Photoshop to do a really realistic architectural images that are better than renderings. And we got better at our fifth axis modules. We learned about how we're going to attach those things to each other and what we're going to do next time. Uh, I would guess within a few months, this is going to be the roof of a carport. And then it'll be the roof of a high-end residence. And then maybe it'll be a chunk of a museum. And each one of those will be better than the last. We're always iterating. Each, we learn from each one. And um, that's what keeps it fun. So if you want to come visit us, we're in Santa Barbara. We'll take you sailing. <laughs> You'll see our, we have 5,000 square meters of manufacturing running day and night. And a team of fun, motivated people doing interesting projects in a, a wide range of fields. Um, we don't talk about design thinking a lot. We, <laughs> we just make stuff. <laughs> Fuck off.